Teresa Yanaris at Divine Frequency. A warm welcome to my new subscribers and a huge hello to those who pledge on Patreon. Thank you for supporting independent media. Y'all rock. In the last video, we kicked off the dream series discussing a lucid dream and seemingly angelic appearance. Now we're diving into the doctrinal and theological response. Let's go. All right, let's dive right in. Hashtag mermaid life. First and foremost, I am not an authority on anything, but especially not Bible doctrine. Uh, I was actually very overwhelmed by the amount of information that I found on this, but you know, just we're going through this process together. I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and, and do this now. Historically speaking, people thought that dreams were messages from the gods or from a supernatural source, okay? So we're talking about dreams being paranormal, kind of the unexplained, right? We don't really like have the tools to fully understand what dreams are and that phenomenon. But then we have this concept of the supernatural interfacing with us through dreams. So that which is beyond the physical, meaning supernatural beings, God, angels, things like that, communicating with us through dreams. That would be a supernatural force coming into a paranormal uh, phenomenon. I thought this was really interesting. Historically speaking, people began to believe that those who had frequent dreams were favored by the gods. So then at a certain point, people began to ritualistically persuade the gods to give them dreams. And so we have the creation of ritualistic practices to try to evoke a response from supernatural forces. This is where the art of soothsaying was created. Soothsaying is defined as the seeking after knowledge of future or hidden things by inadequate means. What does this mean, seeking knowledge by inadequate means? These soothsayers or dream interpreters were tasked sometimes with uncovering the meaning of someone's dream where this person doesn't even remember the dream, right? So how, how are they supposed to uncover the meaning of a dream where they, the person's like, oh, I don't remember my dream. So these soothsayers would call upon supernatural sources in order to get the information that they were not able to get from their own human ability, okay? So we have the concept of the paranormal, meaning regular human abilities that we uh, don't have a scientific explanation for yet, okay? So dreams, psychic abilities, things like that that are just normal human abilities, right? But then there's a gap between what our abilities are and what we might be seeking for. And so you have this concept of a soothsayer going, well, I don't have the human ability to know these things. So I'm going to seek a supernatural force in order to give me the information that I want to have, right? So what's the motivation for that? You know, it makes you wonder, they're, they're probably competing with each other, right? Or it's almost like an ego thing too, where it's like, oh, well, I found the knowledge for this. And then you have this concept of pride coming in and then they're trying to grow into these higher roles and they're, they're seen as, um, you know, people who communicate with the gods. And so they're elevated to a certain level of authority among other humans, not by anything of their own human ability, but because they're interfacing with supernatural sources for that knowledge. It makes you wonder, what are those supernatural sources that are giving these people this information? So they would define the future by attempting to exert their own will to draw upon supernatural forces during uh, ritualistic incantations and things like that. Divination is seen as evil because a human with a human will is seeking to force a supernatural being to give them power, knowledge, or wisdom. Divination is the seeking of knowledge by sinister supernatural means. So you have the concept of prophecy, which is lawful knowledge of the future given by God. And then you have the opposite of that, which is divination, which is considered evil because you were trying to force a supernatural being into giving you answers. Divination is considered superstitious. So we need to talk about that word. Uh, superstitious means to offer divine worship to beings other than the creator God. So it means to raise up supernatural beings and worship them and fear them above the creator God, lifting them up in an improper manner. This word comes from the Latin supersisto, which means to stand in terror of the deities. It's a vice contrary to religion by excess. Not that it offers more to the divine worship than true religion. It offers divine worship either to whom it ought not. And uh, I will link these sources below. So I thought this was interesting. I'm, I'm going to quote this. This is from newadvent.org. I'll link this below as well. 
Most of the Egyptian magic books likewise contain incantations either to procure or to explain dreams. Their incantations had to be recited according to fixed cantillations, and the soothsayer's art consisted in knowing them thoroughly, copying them faithfully, and applying them properly. Side by side with this religious view of dreams, which regarded them as the expression of the will of God, there existed the superstitious view, according to which all dreams were considered as omens. So assuming that things causally connected in thoughts are causally connected in fact, people blindly believed that their dreams had a bearing on their own fate and eagerly strove to discover their significance. I thought this was really interesting because as you guys know, if you follow Divine Frequency, I have a lot of dreams, right? And I like to think about their significance. I like symbology. I like all of these things. I think it's interesting. I think most of us on this channel do. I can say, oh, well, I, you know, I read a couple Bible verses and there were some cool connections with things that happened the night before. The question comes down to, is it bad to have a dream and to want to know what it means? The answer has to be no, right? I mean, it can't be bad to try to add some kind of significance to your dreams. I think where the problem lies is how you're going about seeking that information and where you say that uh, knowledge is coming from. If it's seen as a sin to try to interpret dreams by inadequate means, it makes me think that the answers that the soothsayers would gain were lies. If the means are inadequate, does that mean that the supernatural forces were deceiving the humans that sought their knowledge? God can't be forced into a response. So when you attempt to forcefully evoke a supernatural being's response, who is actually responding to you? In this episode, we discuss the history of dream interpretation, soothsaying, and divination. Stay tuned for the next episode. We will explore biblical and doctrinal interpretations about God speaking to us through our dreams and the process of God's revelation and prophecy. This is Teresa Yanaris at Divine Frequency, where we rise the wave between the supernatural and the paranormal realms. Bye.